Namaskar, Nilesh Oak here, and welcome back to the introduction to Indian calendar. In this module, we are going to look at the metaphor of the wall clock and the celestial clock. In both cases, the displacement of an object is used to measure time. For example, in a typical wall clock, we have three specific things on the wall clock itself. One is the long arm, other one is the short arm, and then the background reference circle, naturally 360 degrees divided into 12 parts. Those are the 12 hours. And each of this hour could be divided into five sub parts, and that refers to uh, minutes. Now, what are some of the things that we need for a functional wall clock? One is the reliable movement of the moving objects, specifically the long arm and a short arm. Then we also need a reference frame to track the movement of these moving objects, which is that circle of 360 degrees, first divided into 12 different parts and then also 60 different parts. So five times 12, that is 60. So 12 hours and 60 minutes. Then the third thing we also need is a reference starting point. And in the case of a wall clock, it simply refers to a specific location for which the time of the day is measured, such as New York, London, or Tokyo. Now let's look at the celestial clock. Now in the celestial clock, the smallest unit is the unit of a day. In the celestial clock, the day is the smallest unit of measure. What you see here is very similar to what we saw on the wall clock. Imagine the earth at the center. Now that is, that is the reference point for which we are creating the calendar. And we have two moving objects around the earth as seen from the earth. Moon is going around the earth and the sun is also going around the earth. Now remember, we are referring to the relative motion. So as seen from the earth, both moon and sun appears to go around the earth. Think of them as the long arm and the short arm. The long arm can be directionally compared with the mo movement of the moon. The short arm can be directionally compared with the movement of the sun. And similar to the background reference frame of 360 degrees divided into 12 parts, that is 12 hours, and then further divided into 60 parts for 60 minutes. We can imagine multiple ways to divide this celestial circle, either as six seasons of two solar months each, or you can divide this into 12 solar months of 30 degrees each. And also one can imagine dividing this celestial circle into 27 equal parts referring to 27 nakshatras. Now let us look at a typical panchanga, typical calendar. So first I'm going to show you what is called Bharat Dinadarshika. It is the outcome of my research on the dating of the Mahabharat war. And therefore the use of the year of the Mahabharat war 5561 BCE as the sheet anchor or as the reference point for the calendar. And that's what you will see on the left side uh, line number four, row number four, which says Mahabharat somewhat 7,581. Now this was done in collaboration with 
a traditional panchanga makers family one of the oldest if not the oldest living tradition of panchanga makers in india and that that is date panchang and on the right side i have their typical days online panchanga page written in marathi so we'll begin with the bharat dinadarshika let's look at the very first line that's a gregorian date 17 february 2021 this is something every one of us would relate to would understand now as we go down some of us will able to identify some of these things and some of us or all of us would not understand some of the things some specific elements at all so let's see what else we have so gregorian date is what typically people would know uh, this is based on the, that gregorian calendar uh, it is a purely solar calendar but it does not take into account the background stars so it is more of a tropical in nature not the sidereal type the next thing we are going to look at is the three elements which are specific to this day which is to say more than likely they are going to change the next day tomorrow so the weekday is mentioned as wednesday then tithi of the day is mentioned as a shashti as in six and nakshatra is mentioned as ashwini this is the information about the specific day now let's look at the information about the month or masa at the at the top there in this green square you see saura masa that is a solar month and the name of the indian solar month is tapasya next to that we have uh, two types of lunar months one is called chandra amantamas or amantamasa and right now it happens to be magha shukla paksha the chandra purnamantamasa is a magha shukla paksha they both are identical right now these for this day now what is the different difference between amantamasa versus purnamantamasa if we assume that everyone listening to this understands what a full moon day is and what is meant by the day of amavasya or new moon day then a lunar month that is measured that starts begins from the amavasya the new moon day and ends with the next new moon day is called the amantamasa or amanta month the purnimanta month purnimanta masa is something that begins on the full moon day and it ends at the next full moon day let's look at additional elements now we have a information about the saura ritu that is the season and season is always directed always decided by the sun so it's a solar season so we don't have to necessarily say it <laughs> if we say season then we understand it is because of the relative position of the earth or particular hemisphere of the earth with respect to the sun but just to emphasize the point that the seasons are driven by this relative combination and especially the position of the sun we are calling it saura ritu and that happens to be shishira ritu then the next thing we have is the ayana and it is uttarayana so in the modern calendar for example beginning with 21st 22nd of december all the way to 21st of june would be uttarayana and beginning with 21st of june all the way to 21st 22nd december would be dakshinayana all right let's see what else we have okay now we have a saura date that is a solar date for indian calendar it has three elements the day is 29 the month is tapasya that we already saw somewhere below and the reference year that is given is 2077 and if you follow the trail below it will tell you that this 2077 is based on the vikram samvat vikram samvat is a another reference point just like mahabharat samvat or just like a gregorian date 
that is employed for one time one type of uh, calendar counting there is another one actually that is the shali vahan shaka again very popular in india and based on that shali vahan shaka reference point 19 142 years of that reference point uh, has uh, have elapsed. And finally, the Mahabharat somewhat. This is based on my dating of the Mahabharat war in 5561 BCE. And for many reasons, which we will not discuss here, many uh, strategic reasons, many mathematical reasons, accuracy and precision considerations, it makes sense to use the year of Mahabharat war as the reference point for a new calendar, or just let's call it a 21st century calendar for India. And that is why I have introduced this term Mahabharat somewhat. Uh, if you look at the Date Panchang, written in Marathi on the right side. I don't want to go through the details, but quickly I want to show you that there are some additional pieces of information which are not there in Bharat Dinadarshika. Well, there are some things in Bharat Dinadarshika which are not mentioned in Date Panchang either. For example, Mahabharat Samvat is not, in, not uh, referred to in a Date Panchang. Uh, but look at the day, 17 February, 2021. The, the day is mentioned. The Shaka mentioned here is the Shali Vahana Shaka. That's why it matches with this 1942. The type of Samvatsar, there are many names for its specific years and they go through a cycle of 60 and there can be many other cycles, but this cycle has uh, each year has a specific name and after it goes through those 60 years it the whole list will be repeated again this year happens to be a sharvari samvatsar then you can notice the ayana is the same uttarayan the season is a shishira rutu the month is mag and in this case it is the amanta reckoning which is very common for uh, most part in india however there are certain parts of india which uses this Purnimanta uh, uh, calculation of the calendar. The Tithi is mentioned, it's Shashti, then, and it says Aho Ratra, meaning almost for most part of the day, this day, the Shashti was the Tithi. Nakshatra is mentioned as Ashwini. Next to that is the timing given, which is to say at what time that Nakshatra will change to the next Nakshatra. Two additional things you can see here, which are considered key parts of a traditional Indian Panchang, which we are not going to discuss in this particular introductory course on Indian calendar. And they are also not mentioned in Bharat Dinadarshika to keep things simple. Then we have mention of a Chandra Rashi, which is Mesh, which is not mentioned in Bharat Dinadarshika. We also have the Nakshatra of the sun mentioned. We also have a nakshatra of a Jupiter mentioned, or in this case, the zodiac of the Jupiter mentioned, it's Capricorn Makar. Ditto for uh, Venus, which is Shukra. And the nature of the day from the Muhurta perspective, okay, if, is there something special about this day that is typically covered in this area? I'll skip this Shastra Artha portion. And then there is there are two additional elements, Rashi Pravesh, which is to say, did any of the planet or moon or sun crossed on this day into a different uh, zodiac, okay? And then we have something called Rahuka. All right, that's all I have for this module. In the next module, we will look at the motions of the earth, the moon, and the sun.